It's time to kick your Instagram addiction because Black Mirror is back to scare the living out of you. Like past years, season five will undoubtedly make you rethink your relationship with social media, video games, and AI pop star robot dolls. Make sure you've watched the entire season, that's all three episodes, before watching any more of this video because we're going to be spoiling everything. You already know Black Mirror takes place in one crazy connected universe, and we had a whole lot of fun tracking down as many Easter eggs as we could find in season five. But if you come across something we've missed, be sure to let us know in the comments. <laughs> Let's start with the Tekken and Street Fighter inspired striking vipers. Most notably, the updated hyper realistic VR fighter features add on tech made by TCKR, which stands for Tuckersoft. Sounds familiar, right? Well, that's because it's the gaming company in Bandsnatch and the same system featured in USS Callister. The technology is also behind the simulated afterlife of San Junipero. Striking Vipers, specifically, is made by Saito Gemu, which is the same video game company behind Season 3's Deadly Playtest. Vipers features characters like Roxette, Lance, Tundra, Nagato, Victor, Dakota, and Kali. Definitely inspired by some Street Fighter and Tekken characters. Think Chun Li, E Honda, Kuma, and Panda. Lance even attempts a Hadouken and fails miserably. Oh, I can't even remember what moves this guy can do. Money's like ready to bike. Speaking of Tundra, the playable polar bear, that has to be a nod to season two's white bear, right? The white bear became an enduring symbol in the hunt for Jemima. A hunt that ended in a local forest. Danny and Carl control the older version of Striking Vipers with what looks eerily similar to a Jewel Shock. Perhaps they're playing on Black Mirror's version of a PS2. Tetris Effect is even popular in the Black Mirror universe, but how dare they call it boring. Come on, what are you playing? Something goddamn boring is what I'm guessing. All right, you got me. On her night out, Theo hits up the Jerry Coa Kawara bar, which is the location in Brazil where most of this episode was filmed. Later on, Theo gifts Danny with a lacy chocolate bar for his birthday. Lacy Pound is the featured character in Nosedive from season three. See you tomorrow, Toto. See you, Lacy. <laughs> Carl reveals that he had virtual sex with Tundra. Tormund would be proud. She was no ordinary beast. Then it's the man with a I know you never fed a bear. Striking Vipers wraps up with Danny and Carl back in their virtual world atop the Saito helipad. Again, another nod to the company that makes the game. Till then, not one minute. Next up is Smithereens, the social media giant that's literally making people go mad. Starting us off, Chris gets a hitcher pickup mid meditation, and it's right outside the Bandersnatch Theatre. An obvious shout out to the game and interactive installment of Black Mirror from last year. Speaking of Bandersnatch, in one of the many endings, there was a UKN news segment about Stefan's game. If you look at the news crawl, you'll notice Senate Committee grills Smithereen CEO Billy Bauer over Russian bot. A nice setup to Topher Grace's character we'll meet in this episode. Back in the car, Chris is headed to Skillane Street, as in Victoria Skillane from White Bear. Also on the map, we see Fences Pizza, which was in Crocodile. You remember Fences as the mobile pizza delivery van that runs over the guy and sparks that insurance claim. They also feature in USS Callister. We also see Raymond's store, which is a callback to Men Against Fire. Another name drop with Redfield Theatre, that was the surname of Cooper from Playtest, and of course, Claire and Chris from Resident Evil. There's also Dahl's Shoes, Dahl's a supporting character from Hated in the Nation. And finally, we see Huck's Bar, which is a nice reference to Black Mirror writer and wife of Charlie Brooker, Connie Huck. Now, Smithereens is kind of similar to Twitter, while Persona is sort of like Facebook, which also exists in the Black Mirror universe, at least according to Theo in Striking Vipers. It's cool, really. We um, broke up like a... Like a year ago? No clue. <laughs> he, I'm not on Facebook, so. An interior shot of Smithereen's lobby is filled to the brim with Easter eggs. There's a giant screen displaying all the trending hashtags and tweets, or whatever you want to call them. Let's run through them. Ready for three times fire emojis tonight, AOX, which is a reference to Ashley O, who's performing at Wembley. UKN breaking news tweets about Prime Minister Callow to meet with EU negotiators in Brussels. Does that mean that Brexit exists in the Black Mirror universe too? At Saito Gemu posts, six hour warning, can you wait? Possibly a reference to the release of Striking Vipers, 
or it could also be something to do with the hashtag CytoXNetflix. Could that be another little crossover? Maybe another interactive game coming? Other trends include hashtag Saito Gaming Announcement, could be Striking Vipers, could be the interactive thing, hashtag Bargain Hunt and hashtag Gogglebox, both UK TV shows, hashtag Sea of Tranquility Reboot. Sea of Tranquility was mentioned in Nosedive when Lacey meets a bunch of cosplayers, and this reboot was also mentioned in Rachel, Jack and Ashley too. Hashtag Delete Persona means that people are rising up against the Facebook-esque website, hashtag Tucker, perhaps a reference to Tuckersoft. Hashtag St. Juniper's Strike. St. Juniper's you'll know as the hospital from Black Museum, and I wonder why they're striking. And hashtag Oink Oink Callo and hashtag Snout Rage. Prime Minister Callo from Hated in the Nation will never be able to escape that incident, let's face it. The receptionist is looking at her smithereen profile, and it names her as Hillary Connell. Funnily enough, the actress's name is Hillary Connell in real life, and on her feed you can see a post by Rose Noble, who works in the art department. There are some more trending tags. Hashtag The System. Hashtag Hotshot, which is the show from 15 Million Merits. Hashtag Clayton Lee, the guy from Black Museum. Hashtag Granular, those little bee robots from Hated in the Nation. Hashtag Compliance, which is the drink that makes you comply in 15 Million Merits. And if you thought we were done looking at throwaway references on screens in this episode of Black Mirror, well, you ain't seen nothing yet. It's time to go through Miriam's phone. And boy, does she have some contacts. Let's go through them. Abby Khan from 15 Million Merits. Carlton Bloom, the artist from the National Anthem. We've got Carrie, who was the girl put in the monkey in Black Museum. We have Clayton Lee, again, from Black Museum. We've got Daly, who's probably Robert Daly from USS Callister. Greta, who's Una Chaplin's character in White Christmas. There's Hector, who's Jerome Flynn in Shut Up and Dance. There's Jamie Salter from The Waldo Moment. Karen Park from Hated in the Nation. Kelly from San Junipero. Kenny from Shut Up and Dance. Liam from The Entire History of You. Martha from Be Right Back. Matt, who's John Hamm in White Christmas. There's also Cooper, the guy from Playtest. Dr. Peter Dawson, Dr. Payne. Dudani from USS Callister. Ian Rannick from White Bear. Lacey, who's Lacey Pound from Nosedive. Michael Callow, obviously the Prime Minister. Nanette from USS Callister, Nate Packer from USS Callister, and Nish from Black Museum. Now, when it comes to Chris's Smithereens profile, we can see that he's liked a bunch of things. For example, at Mary PR Lane, two for ten pound meal deal tonight, spared no expense. I know that one all too well. At Nick Bedwell's post about which of the new Saito Gemu consoles should I get, the premium or standard, itchy thumbs. Could be a sly reference there to PS4, PS4 Pro, Xbox One, Xbox One X. Smithereens plays a stress buster playlist to help keep Chris calm when he's put on hold. Some of the jams include Can't Take My Eyes Off You, Turn Around, Where Love Lives, Can't Fight this feeling, kiss from a rose, dreams, can't stop loving you, go your own way, you're the inspiration, and return to innocence. Later on, we actually hear Radiohead while Chris is on hold. And that's the second Radiohead track that's been used in Black Mirror. Such a what did you do, Kenny? Yep, that's a fences pizza box. The franchise must be extremely popular. The tech people at Smithereen also run some account analytics on Chris's profile. He's posted about things like Lip Sync, Glasto, Space Fleet, which is the show that Daily loves in USS Callister, 2014 Wipe, obviously a show by Charlie Brooker, GOT, Michael Callow, Meme, Kanye, Ice Bucket Challenge, Victoria Skillane, clearly he was following the Skillane and Rannick trial, Mr. Robot, Fences Pizza, Between Two Ferns, and hashtag CBB. Flicking over to UKN's website, there are a bunch of recent headlines in the news. B population in serious decline refers to hated in the nation. PM Callow seeks confidence of cabinet, again referencing the national anthem. Introducing the cookie, a clone from your data. We've seen cookies in many episodes, including White Christmas, Be Right Back, USS Callister, and the tech has even been used in Black Museum and Rachel Jack and Ashley too. Blackmail victim found dead in car, could be a reference to Shut Up and Dance. And finally, the company recording everything you say. Well, that could be Google, Amazon, Facebook, I could go on. Now let's move on to the final episode of season five, Rachel, Jack, and Ashley too. Off the top, the episode begins at Rittman High School, a nod to Colin Rittman from Bandersnatch. If Ashley O's on a roll sounds familiar, I'm gonna get what I need it's because the song is adapted from Nine Inch Nails' Head Like a Hole. You're going to get what she eventually sings the original version of the song later on in the episode. The record company is Gervan Records. David Gervan is the script editor on Black Mirror. And the music video's director is Anne Sawitsky, who actually directed the entire episode. 
And hey, look at that, Ashley's aunt uses Smithereen. Ashley too is training Rachel for her dance slash talent competition, and the app looks eerily similar to Ubisoft's Just Dance. Later on, we get a look at another teen pop star. She looks a lot like Ariana Grande, who of course has had a similar background in the entertainment industry as Miley Cyrus. When Kevin is working on his mouse trapping tech, the TV behind him shows the news channel USN, the American counterpart UKN. When we see the news report that Ashley O has been taken to hospital, she's been admitted to, you guessed it, St. Juniper's ICU, the place we saw in Black Museum. The USN ticker on the bottom has a lot more Easter eggs, including architect arrested on multiple murder charges, Mia finally got her comeuppance from Crocodile, UK police branching. Now this is cut off, but it could connect with the ping narrative creator still missing line. This could be a reference to Bandersnatch. Saito Gemu shares jump on Striking Vipers release, obviously a reference to the release of Striking Vipers X. Museum owner's body found in smoking ruins. Clearly someone finally found the body of Rollo Haynes. When Rachel and Jack are watching TV in their room, there are some more lines we should take a look at, like Tusk makes a boo-boo on a British TV show. You'll remember Tusk from Hated in the Nation, where he was a victim of the hashtag death too. Sea of Tranquility reboot. This is the HBO Moon Western that was first mentioned in the National Anthem. You remember they tried to hire a special effects guy that would digitally remove PM Callow. He also worked on that show. In Nosedive, Lacey Pound hitchhikes with Sea of Tranquility cosplayers who are headed to a convention. Hi, May. <laughs> so, oh my god, insane night, but I am so close now. We also get a commercial advertising a Willow Grain upgrade. The grain was first introduced in season one's The Entire History of You. I don't even want to know what kind of features an upgraded version has. You can get a Willow Grain upgrade for less than the price of a daily cup of coffee. All of these Ashley 2s have Ashley's consciousness transferred into the units, similar to what we saw in Black Museum and The Cookie in White Christmas, except in Ashley 2's case, there's been a blocker preventing her from using all her mental capacity. Ashley's evil aunt and company pull out the music from Ashley's brain. The machine that keeps her alive looks just like the Black Mirror opening, loading, slash buffer screen. We hear Ashley O's rendition of Anyone Who Knows What Love Is Will Understand by Irma Thomas. Like so that's a computer saying. Now, this song has been used before on Black Mirror in 15 Million Merits, White Christmas, Men Against Fire, and Crocodile. I like that song. Ashley Eternal. Now, we've seen elements of this already in real life, like Tupac at Coachella. But here, St. Juniper's Tech takes a snapshot of the artist's brain so they can literally live forever. A performer just mimes their actions in some kind of motion capture suit, and the hologram comes to life. Spotlight on me shining strong. The episode ends with some more Nine Inch Nails. Ashley O sings Head Like a Hole, playing at the same bar that the characters drove past earlier in the episode. You're gonna get what you also, you'll notice in the credits that the music was composed by Isabel Waller-Bridge, sister of Phoebe, who wrote Killing Eve and Fleabag. If you haven't seen those shows yet, well, I highly recommend them. Phew, had enough yet? Let us know what your favorites are and anything we might have missed in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.